Hi hey, YouTube, this is Patrick, and um, instead of doing a review for Game of Thrones, I wanted to maybe kind of preview the finale, seeing as I'm not going to do like a post uh, finale. I'll do the review of the finale, but I'm not going to do a post video or anything like that for the whole season. I'll just talk about that in the finale. Um, but I figured I'll maybe do a little, a little bit of a preview of it. Uh, this will not be for non-book readers. It's going to be just for pretty much, I mean, if you want to watch it, you can, but it's going to pretty much spoil everything. So if that's what you want, then you can keep watching. Uh, and even for book readers, um, I'm going to base some of the previews, what I think is going to happen in the finale, on the soundtrack that I bought when it leaked. So if you don't want to know how certain things will play out, at least just based on what the soundtrack says and what I think, um, uh, then yeah, don't, don't, you know, shut it off. Um, also I'm gonna talk about the season three characters that have been introduced for next year. I'll do that, um, you know, maybe I'll do that first. Should I do that first? No, I'll do that next. I'll do that last. Um, yeah, so basically running around what's gonna happen in the finale, um, basically after, uh, you know, everything with King's Landing, uh, it's sad, you see people online, you know, saying they can't wait for this, this, and this to happen in King's Landing next week, because we got so much of it this week, you know, next week we're gonna get probably a handful of scenes, unfortunately one's gonna be with Roz and Varys, I don't know how that works, um, uh, Sansa's gonna talk to Littlefinger, they gave Littlefinger some of, uh, Hound's lines again, which is pissing off people. I know it pissed off Ashley on Podcast of Ice and Fire that I was on the other night. Yay! Um, but, um, yeah, I was on that the other night. I think it, they did, like, a five-hour podcast. I was on it for a few minutes at around, like, the two-and-a-half hour mark or something like that. Uh, Larry Williams was on there, too, at the beginning, and some other people, one of my, um, uh, I don't know if multiple of my subscribers, one, um, the Linecom one was on there. Um, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce the name. You're some you know, the pa patron blitz because of the U. I, 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 yeah, sorry, man. Um, I know they, they had a question that apparently you wanted me to ask on there, so that was just cool. It was just cool to be on there, and um, and uh, thanks both of you guys. Um, anyway, getting ahead of myself, or, or thinking about the uh, the preview for the finale. King's Landing, Littlefinger's gonna get the Hound's lines, and probably, I guess, start setting up what uh, the end game with her is gonna be, with, I guess, probably isn't gonna happen until season four. Um, also with Dantos and everything, that'll be next season. Uh, I don't think she's gonna talk to him this episode. They could, they could maybe end it with like, her talking to him and saying, hey, do you wanna get out of here? You know, I will show you, or something like that. But I don't think they're going to do that. Um, I think they're just going to have her talk to Littlefinger, because Joffrey is going to be betrothed to Marjorie. Um, and maybe Littlefinger is talking to her, basically talking her down, you know, whatever high she's on, that she doesn't have to marry Joffrey um, anymore. Um, also, I hope Tywin's horse shits when it comes into the throne room. That would be nice. Uh, it does it in the book. Um... That's really it for King's Landing. I don't even know what if they're going to do anything with Cersei. Maybe when Tyrion wakes up, if Cersei and the father is still or by his bedside, maybe. I don't know. Uh, they'll have to have Tyrion wake up, but that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it for King's Landing. Rob and Cat um, really won't probably do that much. Rob is going to probably talk to her about Talisa. Um... And we'll get that early scene from, I guess, a, so a Storm of Swords or whatever. Um, where they both done things for love instead of... Uh, it was actually a nice speech. I hope they leave it in about him talking about, you know, following, you know, the heart or whatever like that. Um, and I hope she tells him that she released Jamie because he was going to get his head chopped off. In which case he was good, to, good for nothing. Uh, instead of what they did. But we'll see. I hope that's what they do. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, that's Robin Cat. Jamie and Brienne, I guess they're gonna have their sword fight. 
uh, which I'm really looking forward to, and then get captured. I don't think they're going to have Jamie's hand get cut off. That's a little bit too much. They'll have to do a couple episodes with him next season. Uh, maybe they won't even get captured. Maybe they'll just have his their fight, and he'll she'll beat him. Um, but getting captured is more of a cliffhanger kind of thing to do, so I, I, I'll say that they'll do that and see if I'm right. Um, Winterfell... Now, this comes from the soundtrack. There's a soundtrack. There's a track on the soundtrack called Winterfell, and I thought it would just be a normal rehash of anything. Instead, it's a very, very sad version of the of the Stark theme with a little extra thrown in. I don't think we've heard it yet this season. Plus, the synopsis for the episode says Lewin offers final advice, so it looks like we're going to get, you know, Lewin dying and Winterfell being, if not destroyed, I guess overrun by uh, Ramsay who isn't in the Season 3 cast list, but I think he's not because they're going to introduce him in the finale, or, um... Or, uh, they just didn't want to spoil anything or anything like that. Um... Yeah, but yeah, I think he's probably going to show up in the finale just wearing, like, a helmet. You won't see him. You won't see who, who they've cast yet. Because uh, they haven't cast anybody yet until next season. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with Theon. Um... I mean, I know what they could do with him for this episode, but as far as going forth, uh, I guess I'll talk about that in the review for the finale, based on what they do. I really don't know what they're going to be able to do. Um, but yeah, that's Winterfell. Um, just to... Um, let me see. Oh, we're getting the... Oh, no, I'll leave that to later. Sorry. Um... As far as the the wall goes, John will fight half hand. It looks like it looks like Egret takes a swing at him with the sword in the episode. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm pretty sure John's gonna you know fight him and kill him and then just be moving on with everybody. Um, Danny, the House of the Undying, you know that's obviously gonna be. I really hope they don't screw that up. And, again, based on the soundtrack, which this track was like five minutes long, The House of the Undying is the longest one on the soundtrack. And there's another track called Mother of Dragons, which is about three minutes long. Uh, House of the Undying sounds really very, like, eerie, very, like, ethereal, very creepy. Um, and right in the middle, Danny and, like, Drogo's theme kind of plays. A very, very sad version of it. So I think I, there's a chance that Jason Momoa might show up on... Um, I know we're supposed to see Rhaegar, we might see Viserys again. I don't know if we'll get uh, Harry Lloyd back. I hope so. Um, but I really think Jason Momoa is going to show up on, on Sunday. Um, the other track, the Mother of Dragons ones, just sounds like very similar to the one from last season when she wakes up with the out of the funeral pyre. So I think uh, basically the, the, uh, the whole escaping the House of the Undying is going to be pretty much like it was in the book with the dragons helping her out. And her maybe walking up out of her, uh, out of a like destroyed house of undying. Um, I think that's going to be her cut off basically. Uh, what else? Stannis is going to probably have a little chat with Melisandre. Uh, maybe they'll put that part from the third book when he puts like I don't know if it's like leeches or something. He flings into one each into a fire and says the name of a king. That would be a pretty good cut off. I'd like to see that be the cut off. Um, I don't think we're going to see Davos floating on, like, a rock. They might save that to next season. Um, uh, what else? Who am I missing? Oh, Arya. Arya uh, will get the coin from Jack, and hopefully he changes his face. Um, I'm sure he will, but, yeah. And then the, the, I think the show, basically, again, this is from the soundtrack. This pretty much ruins the end of the show. It, the last track on the soundtrack, it says Three Blasts, which, um, yeah, basically means the prologue of Storm of Swords is the ending of Season 2. Um, and it sounds really, really evil. Uh, so I think it'll be a really, really nice ending. Um, good cliffhanger to the season. Uh, might be more, which, um, might be more annoying to people, because uh, it's much more of a cliffhanger than the last year, last season. Um, instead of building people up with the dragons, we're just going to get like a big, you know, door slam shut on us, uh, for lack of a better, much better term. Uh, 
yeah, so that's what I think what's gonna happen in the finale, based on what I know and based on the soundtrack and everything. Let me know what you thought about that. Uh, as far as season three goes, the cast list, which I have right here, basically has a few things on it. Uh, like I said, Roos, uh, Ramsey Bolton isn't on there, but you know, I'm sure that's because he's appearing in the in the finale. We got Mance Raider. We knew that was coming. I really hope they get James Purefoy. They won't because he's on another show. James Purefoy was Mark Anthony in Rome. He'd be perfect. Or Henry Ian Cusick from Lost, who was Desmond. But he's on another show. Um, so I guess we won't be getting either one of those. So I have no idea who they're going to cast, but I look forward to it. Uh, Dario um, hopefully isn't as creepy as he is in the book. He's such like a scumbag. Um, so I have to play up his charm. I know they're casting. It says anyone but Caucasian. Um, which doesn't mean that they're saying that, you know, it's Caucasian and everyone else. It means I think they absolutely have no idea what race Dario is. I don't really... I kind of pictured him as kind of sort of Arabic or whatever, but um, they're basically going to just let someone come in and make them make it uh, their own next season. The Reeds are in. Everyone bitching all year about the Reeds. And I've said, what, what putting the Reeds in this season would just crush under its own weight. That's what the writers just said. So, I mean, my God, people complaining about that all season. That got old so fast. Um, but they'll be there next season because every time, because now we need a little bit of padding for Brand's story in book three. Um, and now we'll get some with their introduction. So it's actually pretty smart, uh, I think, anyway. Um, who else? The Edmure Tully and the Blackfish are in. Um, so we get to see River Run in the opening credits and see River Run in general. Looking forward to that. Um, the. Um, why is my computer making weird noises? Um, the. Uh, I have my air conditioner on. I hope everyone can hear this. Um, yeah, so we got the. Uh, the Blackfish, which is nice. I guess that means he's more important in the long run. Um, as far as Amir Tully goes, it doesn't say he's like Catelyn's brother. I don't know why they wouldn't make him his brother. But we're still going to get that part of the Red Wedding, that it's going to be his wedding, I guess. Stannis' wife and daughter. Uh, I'm looking forward to see. No patch face. Too bad. Um, Stannis' interactions with them, I think, will be pretty funny. Uh, Queen of Thorns. I'd love to get Maggie Smith, but um, probably not. Uh, too much money. Beric Dondarrion. They're probably going to recast him from for next season, which... Uh, makes sense. He had one line in season one. And, uh, Thoros of Mir, um, I'm glad he'll be in. I mean, he's gonna be important, so we're gonna get that whole angle. And Tormund Giant's Bane. Um, so it'll be cool to see, I guess, Mance's number two pretty much up there. Uh, no Val. We'll see what they do with that. They might even put her in, they just haven't said anything. Uh, what else? Oh, no strong Belwas. Hopefully he'll be in it. Um, yes, I confess, I very much want to see him cut the guy's head off and take a shit and then wipe his ass with the cloak. Uh, and then ask for his liver and onions. Yeah, that's all I got. I'll get an interview on that. It's a good note, I think. Good note to end it. Alright. Uh, I just realized the air conditioner was on throughout this whole damn review, so I hope that doesn't, doesn't like make it ridiculously hard to hear. Uh, we'll find out. Alright guys, I'll see you on Monday. Adios.